Welcome back, this is Mike from Digital Offensive. And today, I'm gonna to give you five tips to increase your chances of passing the OCP. Now these tips by no meaning will guarantee that you pass, but following this methodology will definitely greatly increase your chances of passing this class. Now many of you are going to probably say this is common sense, but when you see as many questions and comments and posts that I do, I think these are really needed. These are the top tips that I give everyone that asks me how to pass the OCP. So let's get into it. Tip one, know thyself. If you don't know your skills, if you don't understand the knowledge that you need to know to pass the OCP, or to enroll in any class like the OCP, you're not gonna pass the OCP. You're gonna learn a lot of stuff as you go through the course material and as you start doing some additional research that's gonna help you pass the OCP along the way. So you can literally start from bare minimum and be able to pass the OCP. It's really knowing your skill set, your learning style, and what you're gonna be able to do for yourself to be able to pass the OCP. Let's jump over to the official site to see the bare minimum for this class. So we come down here, they have a list and says, what are the prerequisites for penetration testing with Kali Linux? Now penetration testing with Kali Linux, the PWK, is the official course for the OCP. Penetration testing with Kali Linux is a foundational course, meaning it's the basic, the building block, the foundation to build onto your skills to get to where you wanna be as a pen tester. But skills students must still have are outlined below. So basically understanding TCP IP. How does the, um, how does TCP IP work? Um, how does protocols talk to each other? How do you talk to the protocols? How do you manipulate the protocols? Networking, understanding network ranges, how to set up networks, uh, communications, how UDP, TCP, and all those work as well, and how to interface with them. Reasonable Linux skills. If you never ran Linux, hardcore understanding how Linux works, I really suggest you take some time and get familiar with that before jumping into the class. You should know what files have what permissions, what files are very uh, important to the file system, where configuration files are stored, how the system operates and how you can basically move around in the operating system without a mouse. You wanna be able to run everything as much as possible via command line. How are you with bash scripting, shell scripting, uh, Python scripting, and so on and so forth? You're gonna to need to automate a lot of processes. You're gonna to need to understand what scripts are running and how they're running, what those scripts are doing, how you can use a Python module and basically modify that to carry out the exploit. Um, how do you possibly take a Mesploit module and use that in a Python code so then you're not using Mesploit? All very important. These are the basics that you need for this class. What I would suggest too is look at the syllabus. So if you scroll back up here, here's a very short brief description of the syllabus. You can click here to get the full outline of the course. But have you ever done any passive uh, information gathering? Have you used NMAP, NICTO? Um, have you done anything else that will allow you to gather information both active and passively? Have you done any type of vulnerability scan? Have you used tools such as uh, Nessus uh, to do scan before? And when you did do that scan, did you understand the output that you got from that? Uh, buffer overflows. This is one area a lot of people struggle with. There's tons of great videos out there. I have one myself on BrainPad, which I'll link above. BrainPad is very similar to the course material and it'll walk you through step-by-step step the methodology. Once you understand the methodology, you can get through it really easy. Um, but what I would do here is go through this syllabus and ask yourself, how comfortable are you with these technologies? And if you're not comfortable with these technologies, what are you gonna do to get yourself comfortable with them before signing up for the class? Because once you sign up for the class, you have now spent $1,000, give or take, plus or minus, depending which uh, how many days you signed up for. You're going to have a gap from the time you sign up to the time you start to re refresh yourself, get yourself up to speed on these technologies, these methodologies, these tools before jumping into the class. Because once you're in the class, your time starts ticking away 
where you need to go through a lot of material. Now, part of knowing yourself, also you need to understand how many days you should be buying, right? You can see the breakdown pricing here, 90 days, 60 days, 30 days. Unless you do this every single day as a full-time job, I would avoid the 30-day class. I would even say avoid the 60-day class. I personally went with the 90-day class because it's the best bang for your money. When you look at the cost for renewals or lab extensions versus buying all the time up front. So if you buy a full 90 days up front instead of piecemealing 30 days plus another 30 days plus another 30 days, you're going to save quite a bit of money, right? And you figure three renew three 30 day classes, 800 times three, you're looking way over the 1500 mark, uh, the $1,200 mark, 1150 mark, give or take. So just simple mathematics, you're going to save more money by going with a straight 90 day lab. Now, yes, you do get multiple attempts to try to continue passing the exam each time you get a 30 day attempt, but your goal is not to brute force the exam. Your goal is to pass the exam and understand the data within it um, to be able to do this real time uh, for a job. So with the 90 day lab, think about this. Do you have a family? Do you have a job? Are you going to be able to dedicate the full 90 days to the course? You're going to get burned out every single day in the lab. You're going to need to take time away. You're going to have to take time off for work, time off for family, time off just to detox from doing this every single day. Otherwise, you're going to burn out. And when you do that, you're going to realize your 90 day is really not 90 days. It may be more closer to 60 days by the time you get through the end of this. And there's a lot to go through the class, even in that 60 day window that you now have after your 90 days. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at number two on my list. So number two on my list, this is one of the biggest things I see a lot. People say, how do I pass the OSP? What do I need to do? I got this material, I don't know what to do. Step one, read the book. It's about 300 page book, give or take, uh, broken down in chapters. Each chapter has XYZ exercises. Read the book for that chapter, watch those chapter videos, do those chapter exercises and document your answers for those chapter exercises. You don't wanna to have to come back later and redo those exercises because you didn't document them. Exercises are worth five points on the exam. If you have a 70 and you're gonna fail that exam and you didn't do the exercises, I can bet you you're gonna be kicking yourself in the butt that you didn't do those exercises because those five points can have basically been the uh, your pass. You can have basically pass the exam at that point. So read the book, watch those videos, do the exercises, then hack. I see a lot of times people say, I'm three weeks into the class, I've only hacked one box, or I've only hacked five boxes. If you're three weeks in the class and you read the videos, watch the uh, read the book, watch the videos, done the exercises, then you should be way ahead than that number. Each chapter in the book will help guide you to find a machine in the lab. Those exercises are geared towards your learning to find machines in the lab to apply those skill sets to. Now, not every exercise in the lab will have a box, um, a box for you to compromise. But building on that methodology, what you're learning in that book will allow you to continue your forward progress in the labs. If you don't do it, you're gonna feel lost. <clears throat> Number three, many bad words have four letters. Enum is no different, short for enumeration. By the end of this class, you're gonna consider that a bad word. Every time you hear that, it's gonna make you cringe because you're gonna hear a lot of try harder, enumerate harder. And the reason is because without it, you're not gonna find the answer. A mindset of an attacker is something that we can't really teach. You have to be willing to dig deeper. You have to wonder why things work. You want to, you have to want to know the answer. And to do that, you need to dig deeper. And to dig deeper means that you're doing that additional research, that additional enumeration, that understanding to get that data. If you basically are just running tools and getting that data and you have no idea what you're doing, we can't really teach you that mindset. I tell a lot of people that I talk to, I can teach you to use any tool you want to use but I can't teach you the mindset of a true hacker. The true hacker is gonna to wanna to take things apart and fully understand it. And once they fully understand it, then they can master it to fully uh, use that within their skill sets. 
So enumeration, enumeration, enumeration. How many times have you guys used tools such as Linux Prib Checker, Linux or other tools like maybe JAWS on Windows and dumps out pages of data to you, just pages and pages of data and you're going through that looking for that one uh, vulnerability, that needle in a haystack that's gonna give you that root access that you want so bad. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, about four or five months ago, I was doing it at CTF or a lab or something, and I spent days looking through this data, and I'm going through line by line, nothing's clicking, nothing's clicking. And finally, I came across a line that basically had world writable permissions on a very key file on a Linux system. And it's such a minor difference in syntax that I kept overlooking this. I just kept overlooking it and overlooking it. And finally I was like, oh crap, there's my answer. Modified the file and now I was root. You need to understand not only running these scripts, but the data you're getting back from these scripts for you to be able to fully enumerate boxes. Number four, be true to thyself. This is an area that people are gonna be upset about. If you're one of those types of people that ask for help all the time, before even trying, you're selling yourself short. You're cheating yourself out of the knowledge for you to gain and possibly uh, elevate your abil abilities to pass the OSP or whatever you're doing in life in general, really. This goes for anything in life in general. And asking for help is great. Uh, people are out there, they're willing to help you, they're willing to uh, explain things to you. But if you haven't exhausted your research, your um, if you haven't exhausted your efforts in researching the answer before asking for help, you're doing yourself a disservice. I see a lot of times on Hack the Box, people are asking for hints all the time. I see a lot of times on the OCP forums, people ask for hints a lot. I see a lot of times on the OCP Facebook groups, people ask for hints a lot. And those are just hints. They're not the straight up people asking for answers, which I see on Discord and other areas that are not heavily moderated as these other forums are. Um, asking for that type of data is only selling yourself short. I'll tell you the first time I went through the exam, uh, I spent a lot of time on the OCP forum. And while I got through a lot of boxes, I found out that I was able to decode and understand the hint a lot better than I did actually understanding the attack methodology. I was able to solve the puzzle for the riddle, but I wasn't able to solve the puzzle for the actual uh, puzzle itself to actually gain the access without having to rely on other people. So I was not learning the information I needed to learn to be able to take the exam. Um, so I basically, I cheated myself and basically I didn't have the knowledge. While I thought I was doing really well, in reality, I probably could have done better if I wasn't relying on that to get through it. Um, number five. Document and backup often. I can't tell you how many times I read about people taking the OCP or working on Hack the Box or something and they lose all their data. Their VM dies, um, their cherry tree crashes, the database is corrupted. Countless issues happen. This is goes true not only for CTF, OCP, just in computers in general. You should always be backing up. Anything of sensitive information or things that you don't want to lose, you should be backing up to some other um, solution. I personally use a MyCloud in my house. It's a four terabyte MyCloud. It allows me to back up everything internally to a cloud storage in my house. Uh, and that cloud storage is also accessible through a um, solution. Um, so when I'm traveling, I can access that data as well. I also back up more non-sensitive data to Google or Amazon's clouds as well. Uh, data that I don't mind if it was compromised that it was out there, such as like pictures or something like that. Uh, I'm not taking crazy pictures. So when I say pictures, I'm talking about like family pictures or outdoor pictures, things like that. Um, but make sure that you are backing up often. I would set up your cherry tree to back up to some type of cloud solution, back up any files you're downloading, and then also document. When you're doing the OCP, it is very easy, uh, not just the OCP, but Hack the Box or anything in general that you're doing, make sure you're documenting. It's very easy to get into the swing of things, get carried away, and before you know it, you got root access, but you don't remember how you got to root access from the start. Um, you don't wanna be doing that. You don't have to go back and rethink how you got there and then basically have to reproduce it all again. I usually break it down 
I have a section for my enumeration, I have a section for my user, and I have a section for my route. I'm taking screenshots all along the way, documenting each step I've taken to get there so I can create a repeatable process that I can put in my notes uh, for myself to learn. Uh, I can put it in my reports, basically, so I have a repeatable process for the OSDP people to look at, CTF people, uh, but also for my customers. I do this on a daily basis for work. So when I'm basically doing any type of tax, I'm fully documenting my methodology. So when I go to write my report up at the end, I can say I did X, Y, Z, and by doing X, Y, Z, it did, basically I was able to cause A, B, C, and here's the proof of it, and this is how you can go around and reproduce it yourself. Documentation and backup for every key. So let's quickly review these again. Know thyself. Understand the syllabus. Know your skill sets within it. Make sure you get the full understanding. Number two, read, watch, do the exercises, and then hack. Read the chapter, watch the chapter exercise, exercise, do all the exercises, document the exercises, and then continue your hacking. Uh, enumeration. By the end, as I said, you consider it another bad word, but enumerate, enumerate, enumerate. And not only enumerate, understand what you're enumerating and the output that you're getting from your enumeration. Don't understand your output, then you need to dig deeper and research further to understand what you're seeing. Be true to yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Don't just ask for answers. Apply yourself. You need that methodology. You need that attitude of try harder. Don't get your answer the right first time. Continue reading. Still don't get your answer. Try something else. Finally, last ditch effort. You burned all other resources. Ask for help. People are out there that are willing to help, but they're going to expect that you're going to do some work beforehand because of this type of certification and as well as the hacker mindset of trying and understanding. Document and back up often. Can't say that enough. It goes for everything in life. Back up, back up, back up, and then document. Document your exercises. Document your labs. Document your report. Uh, put all that data together in a clear, precise manner. Understand the requirements for documentation, the screenshots you need, and everything else to put together a key report. That is my five tips to pass the OCP. Hopefully this helps you out. As always, if you're new here, Make sure you subscribe, click that bell notification to be notified when new videos come out, and give the video a thumbs up as that greatly helps the channel grow. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.